Reaching your first 4,000 watch hours is simple. Let me show you how to do it. So let's do some quick maths. So let's imagine we have a YouTube video. This YouTube video is 10 minutes long. And now let's imagine that we have a viewer whose head happens to be the same shape as a YouTube video, don't question it. But let's say this viewer watches this video all the way to the end. Now, because this video is 10 minutes long, your viewers watched it all the way to the end, that is going to get you 10 minutes of watch time. And remember, watch time is the thing we want to get our watch hours up so we can hit that 4,000 number. Okay, you've got that. What does this have to do with getting watch time? Well, let me show you. Let's run this scenario again, but let me just get rid of these. Let's put two more videos in here. So we've got one here and one here, right? Now let's say both of these additional videos are 10 minutes in length. But now when our viewer here watches all three of these videos, we're left with 30 minutes of watch time. So in summary, if we can get people to watch more of our videos, we can get more watch time from the same amount of viewers. In this case, three times more watch time from the same viewer. So how do we get viewers to watch multiple of our videos? Well, I wanna introduce you to playlists. Yes, they're probably things you've heard of before, but I believe playlists are so underrated when it comes to getting watch time. And I know that might sound crazier than having your toilet roll under rather than over. Everybody knows that it should be over, but most of you aren't getting significant watch hours using playlists because you're doing it wrong. wrong. All of you are so let me show you how to do this. So if you click onto a regular video, right? This video here, for instance, you can see that on the right hand side on mobile, it'll be below the video, but on the right hand side, there are videos from other channels. So the instant I decide to stop watching this video, I now have a bunch of other videos that I can click and procrastinate my life away on instead. However, if we open up this exact same video, but we open it up inside a playlist, what you can see is now on the right hand side, all of my competitors' videos have been bumped down the screen. In fact, you can't even see them on my screen. All you can see are more of my videos. So not only will more of my videos autoplay if someone gets to the end, of this but also if someone doesn't get to the end of this video the chances of them ending up on another one of my videos over here much higher and this can help you get one viewer to watch multiple of your videos which leads to more watch time but you might be saying but marcus my playlists don't get any views so it doesn't matter how great they are no one knows they exist which for 99 percent of you is going to be true playlists aren't very discoverable so here's what you want to do if you go to a playlist and you open up a video inside one of your playlists you can then copy a link up here now if i use this link and paste it into google what you'll see you'll open up this video inside of my playlist and it's much easier to get someone to click on your link than it is to get get them to find one of your playlists on their own. So what I like to do, and this works on really small channels as well, in my descriptions, in my pinned comments, I'll leave links to other videos of mine. But if you click these links, what you'll see is it will open up this video inside of a playlist. And even if you're only getting 10, 20, 30, 40 views on YouTube, if you can get 20 or 30% of those people to click on your playlist links, all of a sudden you could be getting 20 to 30% more watch time without doing any extra work. And the more views you get and more videos you post, the more that compounds. But on its own, even though this helps, it's not gonna be enough to skyrocket your way to 4,000 watch hours. So I have a bunch of other methods I'm gonna share with you in this video that will help you hit the 4,000 watch hours. First though, let's play a game. There are two videos here, video A and video B. Video A has a 45% average percentage viewed, which means that on average, people watch it 45% of the way through. It also has about 2,200 views. Now video B has a 33% average percentage viewed and has 1,600 views, AKA less views and seemingly less retention. Now out of these two videos, which one do you think has the most watch hours? Well, it's actually video B, even though the retention is worse and it has almost 500 less views. So how is that possible? Well, video B is three minutes and 13 seconds long. And as mentioned, on average, people watch it 33% of the way through, which means this video generates about one minute and four seconds of watch time per viewer. On the other hand, video A is one minute and 44 seconds long and at a 45% average percentage viewed, that means it's generating about 47 seconds of watch time per viewer. Because when you think about it, the maximum amount of 
watch time I can get from video B is three minutes and 13 seconds. But the max number of watch time I can get from video A is one minute and 44 seconds. Because video B is longer, it has the opportunity to get more watch time per viewer. And so even though its retention might seem worse and it's getting less views, it's actually generating more watch time. In other words, longer videos tend to result in more watch time. Now, big mistake people make here is they go out and just start adding a bunch of filler content to their videos to make them longer. And that doesn't work because if you add filler content, it makes your video worse and people are going to leave your video. And having a long video doesn't help you get watch time if people don't actually watch that video. So how can we make our videos longer without adding a bunch of filler content or just adding so much content that it's going to take us forever to make the videos? Well, let's take a look at this video for a minute. And the video is about, well, you can see from the title and thumbnail. Now, when I watch this video, I noticed something very interesting. Jack starts off by explaining the video and how the challenge will work. Then he spends a bunch of time walking around the street trying to find someone who can rap. Then after finding his random guy, he meets up with him and interviews him in a car. Then they arrive at a recording studio where they're going to record their viral song and mess around for a bit. Then they actually record the song and listen to it back. And then and only then do they actually start doing the stuff that most people would expect the whole video would be about, which is actually taking this random guy and song that they've created and making it go viral. And at this point, the video has been going for about seven minutes. Now most beginners probably would have found a random guy, recorded a random song and explained the premise of the challenge in about a minute and then spent the rest of the video actually trying to make that random guy and song go viral. And because of that, their video probably would have ended up being quite short. So what I want you to do, regardless of what type of content you're creating, whether it's educational, entertainment, whether it's a challenge, take inspiration from Jack here. Don't just show people what it is you promised you were going to show them. Actually take people along for the journey of setting up the challenge you're about to participate in or your line of thinking and coming to the conclusions that you are going to share with them. If Jack had just been like, hey guys, in this video, I'm going to create a viral rapper. I found a random guy on the street. We recorded a random song and now we're going to try and make this song go viral. Let's do it. All of a sudden, his video is seven minutes shorter. But the other thing you can also do to create longer videos is really obvious, but also really genius. So if we have a look at this channel, the videos that really got it started were funny moments compilation videos. This one here is the most successful of those compilation videos, 2.5 million views. And this one here is the second most successful compilation video with 1.7 million views. However, if we look at the watch time generated by these videos, the 2.5 million view video got 182,000 watch hours and the 1.8 million view video got 274,000 watch hours. Now, the reason for this is like we talked about earlier, making longer videos, but I want to draw your attention to the type of video this is. This is a Star Wars Battlefront funniest moments of 2017 video. In other words, it's just a compilation of videos that he's already made. And so many of you guys can create these kinds of videos and make them even longer than 40 minutes. You can make one, two, three hour long videos, just compiling videos that you've already created into what you package as a best of moments video. If you're an education channel, you want to find videos that you have that are highly related and sort of package them into sort of one big course video. So let's say you're a business channel and you have videos that teach people like how to find a domain name, how to choose what website website builder to use, how to build a website, how to launch that website, how to get traffic to that website. Now these can all be different videos that you have, but you can take all these different videos, combine them into a sort of long course, maybe record a few voiceover lines for the transitions of those videos. And all of a sudden you have now one video that's an hour or two long that can get a huge amount of watch time if it gets views. And it's taking you like no extra work because you're just leveraging content you've already created. But you're probably sick of hearing me talk about making videos longer and getting more average watch time Purview. So the next tip I have for you guys is pretty counterintuitive. Now I recently polled my audience on whether you guys find live streaming to be a good way to get more watch hours. 5,000 of you responded. And if we eliminate the, I don't know, I just like voting in polls option, we can see that 65% of people who've tried live streaming on their channel have found it to be a good way to get more watch hours. And people have been commenting things like live streaming was actually the only reason I was able to push my channel up into the monetization threshold. And absolutely, thousands of watch hours in a few months exclusively live streaming partnered because of it. And people saying, I've done one stream and I got about as much watch time as the average video on my channel, but took less effort to produce. So what are all these people doing to get so many watch hours from live streaming? Well, I'll show you that in a moment, but first I wanna thank today's sponsor, vidIQ. vidIQ is the most popular YouTube growth tool in the world, objectively. And I wanna show you a new feature they have that theoretically lets you generate everything you need to create your next video in as little as one click. So when you log into vidIQ, IQ, go to generate, then enter the type of video you want to create. And vidIQ's AI is now going to generate a title, description, tags, hook, and video outline tailored to the specific prompt I've just entered. 
Now, aside from generating the worst thumbnail I've ever seen in my life, the rest of this stuff is actually pretty good. But let's say I didn't like the hook. I could come into format here and adjust it from say a claim hook to a question hook. And you can see my hook's been updated and you can do this with your title or your video outline. Speaking of outline, vidIQ's generated a timestamped outline I can go off. Let's say we make it a tutorial. And then if you're happy with his outline, you can either wing it from here or click generate script to generate a word for word video script and voiceover based off of this. Now, is this any good? Well, I've seen it work pretty well for some types of videos and pretty horrendously for others. But assuming you're in the group that it works pretty well for, this could save you a hell of a lot of time. So to find out if this works for you, you can use my link below to get vidIQ for an entire month to get access to the generate tool and all of the other tools that come with vidIQ for just $1. That link will be down below. But now back to my example about getting watch hours with live streaming. Well, let's just pull a hypothetical example. Let's say you stream for three hours, six days a week, which is not an uncommon live streaming schedule. That equals about 18 hours of content per week for 18 hours of work. Now I couldn't find any numbers on how many viewers the average YouTube live stream gets, but apparently the average Twitch live stream gets about 27 viewers per stream, which I think sounds unrealistically high. So let's just drop this down to say like 15 viewers per stream. So if we times our number of hours streamed by our 15 average viewers, that results in about 270 watch hours per week. And just just assuming this so not taking into account VODs or anything like that at this rate you will have 4,000 watch hours in about 3.4 months now is 18 hours of streaming a week unrealistic depends on the kind of channel you have if you're a gaming channel very common for gamers to play at least three hours of video games a day maybe you could be streaming in that time if you're an education channel doing 18 hours of Q&A's a week is probably a bit unrealistic so it might not work for you and this is why we have a split like this for some people the answer genuinely is no live streaming suck for others and the majority of people it seems like the answer is actually yes so if your sole goal right now is just grinding out watch hours it could be worthwhile trying a live stream and just running the numbers to see how much you would need to live stream to reach 4,000 hours and whether or not that actually makes sense with your schedule I think in the short term it actually could be beneficial beyond just getting watch hours I personally feel that a lot of the streaming I did back in the day helped me become a more confident extemporaneous speaker and some of the most articulate people we know on the internet are that way, in my opinion, because of how many hours they've spent live streaming. Something else you can do though, if you want to try live, but don't actually want to stream yourself is to just continually live stream videos that you've already posted. You can use a service like Fluten, for example, and just have a nonstop live stream of all of your videos playing one after another on repeat pinned to your channel homepage. Again, this works great for a percentage of creators, doesn't work very well for a lot of others. The only way you'll know if it works for you is if you try it out. But Something that does work for everyone is my next point, which relates heavily to something we talked about earlier, which is if we can get people to watch more of our videos, we're going to get more watch time from the same number of viewers. And that's where end screens come into play. And when you're uploading a video, if you come to this section and then you come click here, what you can do is add an end screen. And that's going to be an element that shows up inside of a video that viewers can click on to watch another one of your videos. Now, most of you are using end screens right now, but you're probably not using them very compellingly. And what I mean by that is you should know the end screen you're going to add to your video before you even record your video. That way you can transition the end of your video into your end screen. So people naturally go from one of your videos to another one of your videos to another one of your videos. For example, my final point in this video is to get more watch hours, you wanna create videos that actually retain your viewers because it doesn't matter how long your videos are, how long your live streams are. If people click off in the first 10 seconds, you're getting 10 seconds of watch time. And retaining viewers is such an in-depth topic that I've created a whole nother video about that that you can check out by clicking the end screen on screen. I talked to some of the smartest YouTube editors educators on the platform like people from vidIQ, Nate Wealth, Nate Black, Ed from Film Booth, Robert Benjamin and more. So check out that video if you want to get more watch hours and make sure you use end screens just like I did.